Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and we're glad to have you back again. And we've got a great guest today, Melanie Dodaro of Top Dog Social Media in Canada is Canada's number one LinkedIn expert. So we're going to talk today about how LinkedIn can make a difference in your business. So let's welcome Melanie to the show. Hi, Melanie. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have you on the show. So you are, as you like to say to yourself, you're Canada's top LinkedIn expert. So why don't you just start talking to me about why LinkedIn is a good site for businesses to be active in? What can people do with LinkedIn? Sure. Um, you know, the reason that I think I like LinkedIn so much is because it's, it's a business social network. In fact, it's the number one business social network. And so a lot of the stuff that happens on Facebook and Twitter doesn't happen on LinkedIn. Um, you know, nobody's talking about what they have for lunch or what they're doing tonight. It's really very business focused. So if you're looking at social media for a business building tool, it's an ideal social network for that. And it's especially great for entrepreneurs, professionals, even B2B salespeople, um, and it really a must you know, for, for those people to be spending some time on it. And I think that you know, there's a lot of misconceptions around LinkedIn. People think that it's just a place that you post your resume. Uh, or maybe that you look for jobs, or maybe where recruiters are, are, are looking for new employees. But the reality of it is, is that 68% of the people that are using LinkedIn uh, are business decision makers. So there's a tremendous amount of business opportunity on LinkedIn that a lot of people aren't quite aware of. Interesting. And I think you know every professional should have a robust LinkedIn profile. I certainly do, and I'm sure you do too. So what do you think are some of the things that most people don't think about when using LinkedIn in different ways of using it? Well, I think the number one thing that uh, most people overlook is how to actually design their LinkedIn profile so that it's going to produce the results that they're looking for. First of all, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, or you're a professional, a lot of times today, one of the very first things that somebody will do when they're thinking about doing business with you is they'll Google your name. And because LinkedIn's got such powerful Google indexing, your LinkedIn profile will show up at the top of the search results. And so it's very often your first online impression or your first impression altogether um, that a client will have about you. And so creating a powerful presence that really speaks to your ideal clients is important. And a lot of people make you know, a lot of mistakes in terms of how they create their profile. They really kind of think, People just upload their resume and that, that's all that's needed. But that doesn't really speak to anybody because what, what really you need to be focusing on is how to design your LinkedIn profile so that it speaks to your ideal clients and really engages them to take the next action, which isn't contacting you. That's, that, those are some very good tips. I know even in my LinkedIn profile, it's got misspellings of my name just so people would, would hit it if they even misspell my name. <laughs> so I thought that that's an interesting one. Tell us a little bit about things like LinkedIn groups and answers and some of the other functions of LinkedIn where people can get involved. Yeah, LinkedIn groups are really where the, where the gold is on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a tremendous opportunity to really connect with your target market and position yourself as you know a leading authority on your topic, whatever your topic is. And so when you're combining uh, LinkedIn with blogging, you can get some real magic happens because you can start to position yourself as that you know, credibility increases and that you, know, you get that um, opportunity to really showcase your, in, your, your knowledge on your specific topic and position yourself as a leading authority. The mistake that most people make is that they join a bunch of groups that are related to their particular industry. And what you need to focus on is joining groups where your target market is. And so when I, I teach LinkedIn seminars regularly, and I have a course called the LinkedIn Profit Formula, and one of the things that I teach is to, is, this is my criteria of how to choose, because you've got 50 groups to, to choose from on LinkedIn. And I will say to uh, my students to basically choose four to five groups that are industry specific to what you do. So if you're an accountant, you know, accounting groups. If you're a financial advisor or a coach or a consultant, whatever you are, choose some groups related to your specific industry so that you can pay attention as to what's going on, see what other people are doing right, see what they're doing wrong, and really learn from that. 
And then you might want to join about four or five groups on things that you're interested in learning more about. So, you know, social media is a huge topic today. You might be interested in learning more about social media or marketing or LinkedIn or, you know, any of these different topics to grow your own business. So join a few groups that are related to things you want to learn more about. But the bulk of the groups that you join, 40 plus, should be specific to where your target market is spending their time versus, you know, having them all industry specific and just engaging and, and interacting with your peers isn't going to get you any new business. I like that tip. And, and you know, understanding who you're selling to or who your target audience is very good. Let's talk about something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because I've been doing it for such a long time is connecting with people. And what are some of the tips that, that yeah. make people successful at connecting with whomever they want? Can we talk, talk about that a little bit, Melanie? Yeah, that's a great question, Jeff. Um, okay, I'm going to sum it up in three words. Personalize, personalize, and personalize. When you're sending connection requests to people, make sure you always send a personal note. So whether it's somebody that you know or somebody that you'd like to know, and so there, you know, the, what you write in that note is going to dictate whether or not someone's going to accept your connection request. You have to be very careful about how you approach this because LinkedIn doesn't like you sending connection requests to people you don't know. Now, having said that, I totally encourage uh, my clients and my students to send connection requests to people they don't know, doing it the right way. So making sure that it's uh, being positioned uh, in a way that, you know, gives them a reason to want to connect with you, but also really personalizing it so that you, you know, they can see that this isn't just a generic message. You've got their name in there, you know a little bit about them, you talk about that a little bit in the, in the message, and you kind of tailor it to them. And when you do that, you're going to have a lot more success. And I'll tell you one more trick that I, that I share with people in my course and in my seminar, and that is I always give people uh, the opportunity if they're not interested in connecting with you, I always throw in a line saying, you know, if you're not interested in connecting, no problem, just click ignore. And the reason that I do that is because LinkedIn um, has a criteria where you, if you get a certain amount of what they call I don't know, people that have said, I don't know this person, uh, they'll ban you from being able to send more connection requests to people that you don't know. So basically what they'll do is they'll restrict it so that you have to have an email address. You have to know the person enough to know their email address to send a connection request. So personalize, personalize, personalize. That's, that's good advice. And I think, obviously, um, I, I've gotten pretty good at it. And I would say at least 9 out of 10 people I try to connect to connect with me. So, uh, but, but it really comes down to answering the question is, what do you know about this person that you're communicating with? You know, how can you demonstrate that you did your homework? I think that just makes such a big difference. So, for let's let's try to distill this down. For uh, let's say you're a marketing or a sales e uh, executive, and say a mid-sized to smaller company, and you want to start using LinkedIn. What do you think are some key factors for them to know t of how to grow their business using LinkedIn? Your success on LinkedIn absolutely begins with the foundation of setting up a powerful LinkedIn presence. If you don't have a powerful LinkedIn presence, your success is going to be much, much, much less than somebody who's taken the time and really created a compelling LinkedIn profile that not only showcases their, their credibility and their expertise, which is just a small, small part of it, the most important part is that it speaks to your ideal clients because people don't care about you. They don't care about me. You know, they don't care about us. They only care about themselves and what we can do for them. So ideally, your LinkedIn profile needs to really, truly speak to that. And I spend an entire day teaching people how to do this from start to finish. In fact, I just did a LinkedIn seminar yesterday. Uh, I've got three more in the next two weeks. And that's what we, we did. We spent the entire day creating a compelling LinkedIn profile. I have clients who hire me to do this for them. And I'll spend literally between eight to ten hours ma minimum on creating a profile. And so the criteria that I do is, you know, well, I have a number of different things. First of all, I want to make sure that my clients are showing up at the top of the search results for the specific keywords they want to be found for. A lot of people make the mistake of using the wrong terms. So the, the terms that we need to use are the terms that our ideal clients are using. 
and I had probably about 20 sales reps in my LinkedIn seminar yesterday. One of the things I told them is I was like, remove sales rep from your profile. You know, your ideal clients aren't looking for a salesperson. The only person that might be looking for a salesperson is a recruiter that's looking to hire one. So what is it specifically that you do? And this was, uh, I had a large group of media people, um, radio people in my seminar yesterday. I talked to them about, you know, what is it that you guys do? You do advertising and marketing. So instead of saying you're a sales rep, say you're an advertising consultant. So that was just one of the little tips that I gave them about choosing and selecting the right keywords. The other thing that's important is making sure that your profile isn't all about you. It needs to really speak to who you want to attract and it needs to be designed so that it's grabbing their attention and they can quickly see by looking at it that you're the person that can solve the problem that they're having, whatever that problem is that's related to your specific industry. Good. So obviously spending time creating your LinkedIn as a person, creating your LinkedIn profile makes a lot of sense. But those aren't the only kind of profiles you can create in LinkedIn. You can create company profiles. You can put your products out there. You can get product recommendations. Talk about those functions, because I think LinkedIn has made some changes to the company profiles recently, right? Yeah, it has. The, the company profiles um, are much more aesthetically pleasing now. Uh, there's a little bit more opportunity for graphics and, and whatnot, so they look nicer. Um, and I think that a company profile is you know, extremely important for you know, middle, mid to, to larger businesses. They definitely need to make sure that they have that, that company presence specifically so all their key employees, all their employees within the entire organization can be linked to that company page. But from a, a business standpoint, the, the real magic happens from your personal profiles and how each of your, your team members um, are using their personal profiles to attract and engage new potential clients. Because people really want to do business with people. They don't want to do business with companies and brands. Although, you know, of course, they're going to ultimately, but it's the person that they're dealing with that's going to make the difference. So the real magic truly happens with the personal profiles. Although it is, you know, certainly important to have your professional, you know, company brand out there. Uh, across all the different platforms, including LinkedIn. And yes, you can showcase your products and your services. I just personally don't think a tremendous amount of business is going to come from that. It's going to come when there's that human interaction and you know, there's a connection made and relationships being built, which LinkedIn is so incredible to, you know, to use uh, to achieve those goals. I, I, you're, you're absolutely right about the companies. I think it's important to be there just so if someone's looking for it, they find it. Um, let's talk about one other thing which I think is, is, is so important. I see a lot of LinkedIn profiles that don't have photos. Why is it so important to include a photo in your, I mean, it's easier when you're cute mm. like you and not, not like me, but, <laughs> but why is it so important to have a nice photo in your LinkedIn profile? That's a great question. You know, um, it came up yesterday in, in the seminar that I did. One of the guys had a picture of him with a fish. And I'm like, okay, that's a great picture for Facebook. Not so great for, for LinkedIn. But what you're talking about is not even having a photo at all, which is, you know, a lot of people will think that your profile is a spam profile and that you're not even a real person because you don't have your profile there. And it comes back to what I just talked about is people want to deal with people. And we're, most people are visual. And so when they're seeing, you know, a smiling face on the other side, uh, it just gives them some perspective of who they're speaking to. And so having a picture is really super important. But not just having any picture. You know, having a picture that's a close headshot, you know, that, where they can see your eyes and they can see your face. Uh, I see some pictures of people with, you know, sunglasses on. Uh, or in the particular example that I used yesterday of the guy holding the fish who had gone fishing or, you know, just funny pictures. Funny pictures aren't ideally suited for LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional network. It's a business social network. So don't treat it the way that you treat Facebook or Twitter or some of the other social networks. You need to treat it differently and you need to treat it professionally. And so have a professional headshot. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to go out and, and pay a photographer to shoot a professional headshot because, you know, cameras today, you know, even cameras that we buy in the store for not even that much money can produce nice pictures. So, you know, put on a suit if you're a man, put on a nice, you know, top if you're a woman and just take a nice headshot. You know, really nothing above the shoulder should be in a picture anyway. So, it's very important. 
this has been a great discussion about the power of LinkedIn. Um, for people who are who want to learn more about you and Top Dog Social Media, where can they go to get more information? Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. You're welcome to go to my website, topdogsocialmedia.com. Uh, but I'd also like to offer you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about how to you know, have a compelling LinkedIn presence. And you can watch a webinar that I have, which is all the you know, optimizing your LinkedIn profile so you're going to be found at the top of the search results and, and to make sure that it speaks to and engages your ideal client. And you can register for it at LinkedInTrainingWebinar.com. That's LinkedInTrainingWebinar.com. And it will give you 75 minutes of value-packed, lots of content on everything you want to know about LinkedIn. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Marketing Made Simple TV show. Tune in next week to another great show with another great guest. Before we go, we want to thank our sponsors, Avitage, the content marketing company, Digital Ethos, the educational nonprofit, Communication Strategy Group, PR and brand telling, and the world's largest revenue performance management software company, Eloqua, and of course, our, the maker of our platform, which is Watch It Too. Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern, so we hope you tune in next week for another great show. Until then, we'll see you next week on Marketing Made Simple TV.